I gave as a title to this biography Karl Marx and the Birth of Modern Society. He was a witness of this long-lasting process of giving birth and he was a top-rank analyzer of this process of birth. There are around uh, 30 extensive biographies of uh, Marx, starting with uh, John Spargo, an American guy who uh, did this biography even before World War I, uh, with Mehring and many others. And so uh, I can understand uh, that uh, one will ask why I will now uh, present a three-volume new biography of Marx. I must say the existing biographies, um, they have a lot of um, mistakes and, and deficits. A part of these deficits um, is rooted in the age of these biographies. The oldest are uh, now uh, around 100 years old and in the meantime we have new information, better information. But also I must say a number of the old biography, biographies are rather biased. You have on the one hand the admirers of Marx, there Marx has to be a kind of superhero who always knew better and uh, did the right things. On the other hand you have biographies of uh, critics of Marx. Um, for example there is one biography of the 1930s by a uh, British historian, his name was uh, Edward Carr, and already the title of th this biography uh, explains his approach. He calls it a study in fanatism. And so these critics, uh, in some respect, try to demonize uh, Marx. I think nowadays we have to overcome such biased uh, views on Marx. Um, this means not to be totally neutral. I, I admit freely that I am uh, in favor of Marx, that I estimate his works, but this shouldn't mean that I try to, to cover also the not so nice uh, sides of Marx. I try to, to include really everything and uh, this I think is missing. Um, but the existing biographies are not only one-sided uh, regarding their judgment about Marx, they are mainly uh, focused on the life. Of course they mention the works of Marx, they mention that he was writing Communist Manifesto or Capital, but the content, the problems of these works uh, usually place a minor role in biographies. On the other hand you have um, scientific studies about uh, Marx's works and about the development of uh, these works, but they cover nearly no biographical details. And my research led uh, me to the point that there is a strong interference between life and work. Marx was very engaged with his work. He had new insights in his work. These new insights had political consequences and because of these consequences some friendships, some older friendships he had split. He had to look for new uh, coalitions, for new political partners. So the work influenced strongly the course of life. On the other hand, when you look to his whole work, it is a sequence of attempts to, to construct uh, uh, a big analysis, uh, um, a big consideration of society, of uh, uh, philosophy, of economy and so on. But 
nothing of uh, his big works could be completed. It is a sequence of uncompleted works. And when you now ask why this sequence of, of, of not completed uh, works, you also will find some um, reasons in his life. He um, had to leave certain European countries. His working process was interrupted. The political uh, situation changed. All this influenced his work and uh, what in one year seemed to be very important, in the next year was of minor importance and he tried to adjust his uh, theoretical activities to what was politically necessary. So, you can neither understand the life without the work, nor you can understand the work fully without the life. Therefore, I try really to integrate life and the development of work in, in this biography. And this is one reason why uh, it will have at the end three rather thick volumes. It is a, <coughs> a usual um, critique against Marx uh, to say, okay, He's, uh, he wrote Capital 150 years ago. Um, maybe he's an important uh, person for the 19th century, but now we are in the 21st century. And even some biographers argue in this way, like for example Jonathan Sperber, an American historian who published in the year 2013 uh, a big one volume biography on Marx, or Gareth Stedman Jones, a British historian, who published in the year 2016 uh, a biography. Both argue that Marx, in his theoretical approach, is deeply um, fixed to the debates of 19th century. And so he has not to tell us so much about uh, the 20s or the 21st century. Sperber is in this point even more strict. He says, okay, Marx is not responsible what was done in 20th century in his name. He is not responsible for Stalinism, for example. But also he has nothing to tell us about 20th century. Um, Gareth Stedman Jones is not so strict. He, he admits that, okay, some points of Marx also are interesting today, but mainly he is fixed not only to 19th century in, in uh, Stedman Jones' view, he is even fixed to early 19th century, before the revolutions of uh, 48. Now, I don't deny that Marx is a guy of 19th century, that his, his views are rooted in 19th century, but we have to put the question, what was the 19th century? When you read uh, more recent historical works on uh, 19th century, like that of Bale or Osterhammel, who come from this uh, new school of global history, then they agree that the 19th century was really a turning point in human history, that the, the foundations of modern societies where uh, they, they, they emerged in 19th century. We have an industrial capitalism. This is rather new. It came uh, in, it, 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 um, it originated in late 18th and 19th century, first in England, then spread over West, uh, Western Europe, and also uh, then in 20th century, uh, it spread over a lot of uh, countries in the world. And still we have this industrial capitalism, or uh, what is called the democratization of the political system, that we have uh, the general uh, right to vote, that we have um, 
equal rights for citizens. All these are developments of 19th century that we have mass media. Nowadays we have uh, broadcasting, we have TV or internet, but the, the basis of mass media on, on a wide range started in 19th century. In so far, the foundations of our nowadays modern society were born in 19th century, therefore I gave uh, as a title to this biography Karl Marx and the birth of modern society. He was a witness of this long-lasting process of giving birth and he was a top-rank analyzer of this process of birth and therefore we can also learn a lot uh, about our nowadays society by uh, being occupied with Marx. Also, I think I can present uh, some new sides uh, of Marx. And I, I also must admit that my view on Marx was changed by working on this biography. This biography for me was, a, or still is, a real research project. It is not just something I have in mind and now I have to write down nicely. No, I have to do really research. And one moment, one, one characteristic of Marx I learned by this was that Marx was really a radical learner. He, un until nearly the, the time of his death, he was uh, prepared to learn new things and also he was ready to overthrow former results. Hundreds of thousands of pages of uh, written manuscripts were in his uh, desk room unpublished. Why? Not only because, like in his youth, he had no publisher. When he was older, he, he would find easily a publisher. But it, was in, it, it, it remained in his desk room because he was not satisfied. He thought he had to to come to a new approach, to a new way of presenting things because he had learned new things. And this learning process in Marx never stopped. In, uh, uh, he was in his late 50s. He learned the Russian language in order to read Russian economic literature, Rus Russian statistics, because he saw that um, the, the historical development of landed property in Russia was quite different from the way he found in England. But this development of landed property is very important for the emergence of capitalism. So when in Russia there was a different way than in England, this also means that in Russia there was a different path to capitalism compared with England. And this is important for, for him. Especially in the 1870s, he widened his, his uh, scope. He, he in, integrated new um, new themes, new issues. He did big um, excerpts on mathematics, on natural sciences. Here you can um, imagine, okay, um, natural sciences have to do with production. Production is an issue for capital. Okay, but one of the last books he ordered uh, a few months before his death was a book on uh, debates of the British Parliament about the role of the Greek Orthodox Church in Russia. I have no idea why he did this, what was interesting for him to learn about the Greek Orthodox Church in Russia, but he was interested in, in this. So he was really a, a radical learner who was ready to change his opinion when he found new facts, new evidence uh, for something. 
And this I, I hope I can describe in, in this uh, biography in, in many ways.